me and you have the fountain rest. Me and you have access. We enter into the holiest. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You say, you ever been in there? That's where I get most all of my orders. Oh, yes. 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 Ten trillion times. Yes. Now, me and you have access. We need enter in. We didn't enter in, friend. The veil has been rent. Now me and you have access. Tomorrow, verse 8 17, I love them that love me, and them that seek me early shall find me. Ain't too much going on real early in the morning. Is everybody listening? Now me and you have access. Have you ever been in there? I'm talking about into the holiest, friend. That's what I'm talking about. Are you listening real clear? See it, friend. Amen. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou shut the door, a lot of times, men, you get in there, but we'll leave a bunch of doors open. Them devils said, you need to be doing this, and you need to be doing this, and you need to be doing this. Pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which heareth in secret. You've heard that quoted like that all your life, haven't you? Didn't say nothing about here. Said, see if in secret. When you're in the secret place praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, He's looking at you. Because you say, how's He's looking? Well, Proverbs 15, 3, is that it? The eyes of the Lord are in every place. The holding the evil and the good. And if some smart of it comes up and says, where did God come from? Don't say God came from Teman. Just tell them, say, well, he could have come from anywhere since he's everywhere. He could have come from anywhere yeah. since he's everywhere. Amen. And he may have come back from the east. I mean, he may come back from the east, but he may not. As the light and come out of the east, shine a false one in the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That just means, Brother Harden, it be that quick. Amen. Just like the light and flash. It didn't say he's coming back from the east. Heaven's on the sides of the north. He may come back from the north. Amen. 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 Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according to his work it shall be. You know what that means? And it may happen within the next minute. Amen. God the Father, God the Son looks over to each other and says, it's time to go get your bride. Amen. For yet a little while, and he that shall come, he will come, and he will not tarry. Amen. He won't be stopping at any of the planets. He's coming back after us, friend. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is coming Amen. again. Amen. And we need to get excited about it. Paul believed he's going to come back during his lifetime. He wrote 14 books in the New Testament. Paul said, and we which are alive and remain under the common Lord. And we, that's first grant, I mean, first Thessalonians 4.15. If Paul believed he'd be living, I see nothing wrong with a man of God standing up or a Christian standing up and saying, I believe I'll be living when Jesus comes. When the last few verses of Revelation 3, if we was in chapter 4, We'd be called. Every blood-washed saint of God's leaving in chapter 4. Every one. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed. And if all of that carnal crowd at Corinth is going, you won't have to worry about everybody else. We shall all be changed. 
There won't be one blood washed stain of God left behind. Somebody ought to stand up and shout, friend, if you have any shout in you. And we which are alive and remain unto the come, Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. He's coming for him. Jesus is coming again. But, beloved, be not ignorant concerning this one thing, that one day is the Lord's thousand years, thousand years is one day. From Adam to Christ, 4,000 years of four days. From the time Christ was born in Bethlehem of Judea, two more thousand for him has almost come around. God made everything, Amen. everything Amen. in six days, and he rested on the seventh. So the seventh thousand years could be the millennial. Amen. You say, that word's not found in that just means thousand years. Thousand years is found in there six times in Revelation 20. Jesus is coming again. Quit worrying about wearing yourself out. You probably don't have enough time before he comes. We're on the let me tell you where we're at, friend. Hey, son, let me pick me out somebody. Come here, son. You. That boy right there. Come here. Get right there in that aisle. Come here, son. Get in that aisle there. Give me a 32-yard dash from here to the back. Hit the center of the aisle. Don't get close to them pews. You might hit one of them and break a leg. Take off, fellas. One, two, three. Run her out, boys. Get on it, old bear feller. If I'm going to run that aisle, brother, around at my age, I'm going to center. I'm not going to get close to the edge. I don't understand Baptists that's running so close to the world. I don't know why you want to run so close. Amen. You want to kindly blend in. You don't want to look just exactly like them, but you want to look a little bit like them. I'm going to run that aisle, our friend. I'm going to center. I'm going to center that aisle. Well, we're on the home stretch. So I'd say if I was running here today, run with you fellas. If, I, if I'd been trying, we run from Campobello, South Carolina, but that's 68. We run from the church all the way into Campobello. Or me and Ralph Nix and them boys, was, they, they run at school, friend. But we started out, we kept it. We didn't start out wide open. We just kept that pace up. We got way over down the road, way down the road. Them boys said, let's stop. And run. So I said, no, let's run her on in to Camp Bella. Let's run her on in, son. Amen. Let's run her on in. We're on the home stretch. Turn it on, folk. If you're saved, give him everything you got. Fully submit. Lay aside every weight. Confess every unconfessed sin. Raise the white flag of surrender. Get on the possum's trail of God's perfect will for your life. And don't let nothing or nobody sidetrack you. Let no girl, no boy, nothing or nobody sidetrack you. Get on that possum's trail. Well, these fine children over here, I've been looking for them from the, from the Dogwood Christian Academy. It's been going a long time. Brother Gentry's been there 40 some years now. Over 40 years he's been pastoring that church. We thank the Lord for you. Tell Brother Gentry. I know his wife, Miss Gentry's been real sick. You tell Brother Gentry we're praying for her. It's an honor to have you here. We're on the home stretch. I never made this stuff. I made it last night. Never made it before in all these years. If you girls and boys would spend as much time. I mean, being sure that she was right on the inside as you do on the outside, and you know, that's what you do. Amen. Then a bit of tellings. Look, he's good on the inside. Which is worse, inward sins or outward sins? Don't you think I'm no authority? I'm no authority because I've traveled over three million miles. That don't mean I'm, a, I'm an authority. I heard Dr. W.A. Costner, he preached over 700 meetings, and he wanted to preach 800. That's about been 40 years. 
I said, Lord, if it could be your will, I'd like to preach that many meetings. Well, I've already preached over 1,800 weeks meetings besides a pastor. But I'm, listen, sometimes I get to thinking, I get to thinking, I've been safe going on 52 years, that I'm carnal. I'm being honest with you now. Is everybody listening? I'm being truthful. I get to think sometimes I'm carnal. God help us. But what I'm trying to say, have you got this thing nailed down concerning your salvation? You're going to have to get that nailed down, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And if you miss that, the kingdom of God, that's salvation. Jesus answered and said unto him, Fairly, fairly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. When you got saved, you got born into the kingdom of God. Have you got this thing nailed down? Or did you just make a little profession, a little decision? I can tell you in two minutes whether or not you're saved. Romans 8 9. And spirit there starts with a capital S. Now! 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 If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And spirit starts, he said, Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, it's not the spirit of God, is it? Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. John 14, 16, Jesus said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. If you're saved, the Holy Ghost lives in you, a person. Just as much a person as God's a person. And if he's living in you, Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Number one, you have the Holy Ghost living in you. Amen. Number two, was you made a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. What's new about you? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Galatians 6, 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Ephesians 4, 24. And that you put on the new man, which after God's created in righteousness and true holiness. Have you got the Holy Ghost living in you? You've got the Holy Spirit living in you, a person. If you do, you're saved. And then when you made a new creature, you say, well, I was different for two or three months. I can tell you who you are. You're the seed fell upon stony ground, sprung up and endured for a while. But when tribulation, persecution came, phantom came, it withered. You know why? No root, no fruit. You couldn't get saved and backslide in two or three months. You couldn't get over being saved in two or three months. Amen. Much less backslide. Amen. Number three, do you love the brethren? We know that we pass from death and life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother bideth in death. And whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding with him. So according to 1 John 3, 14, 15, write your name. If you've got murder in your heart against another brother or sister in Christ, if you've got murder in your heart against somebody this morning, go ahead and write her down. I'm lost. Because every saved person's got eternal life. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Did I quote that right? For we know that we passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding with him. And John 5, 24 would be enough. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, believe on him that sent me, present tense, right now, half everlasting life. Take it easy, saints. It's all right to get excited about a high school football game, college football game, professional football game, baseball, basketball, volleyball, other sports activities. But take it easy about this now. Don't get excited now. If you're saved, you've just got eternal life. You've just got everlasting life. You're just going to live as long as God lives. So I'd take it easy now. Don't get too excited. 
Somebody's like to say something about your family tree. But I've seen folk with earned, I'm talking about earned master's degrees, earned from some of the greatest educational institutions in the world, up rejoicing, praising God and shouting. What about that? What about that? Amen, friend. God, to help us, serious thing. You love the brethren? What crowd do you like to be with? What crowd? And the fourth way you can tell whether or not you're saved, about a mile out here, probably, no, it's no mile. I'm taking it to show you. 19 and 55, third Sunday of August, they opened the doors of the church. Brother Steve, on the banks of the lake out there, they felt like I was going to join. It's fixing to help baptism service. And I joined. And I still remember what I said. I said, I feel like the Lord saved me. And I want to join the church and be baptized. And I didn't know nothing about the church. They got to move in a second. And they took me out there and baptized me with Clifton Smith and some others. And for a year, probably, I thank the Lord. I didn't know when you got saved, got born again, and you presented yourself as a candidate for baptism. They supposed to just take you in. I probably thanked the Lord for years they took me into the fellowship. I didn't know no better. Well, 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 well. Amen. And well, well, well. Amen. I didn't know Hebrews 10 25 was in the Bible either. Not forsaken the assemblings of ourselves together. That's the matter of some of us. But exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. If we sin willfully, after that we receive the knowledge of truth, there remaineth therefore no more sacrifice for sin. I didn't know Ephesians 5.25 was in the Bible. Husbands, love your wives. As Christ also loved the church, gave himself for it. I joined that morning, and it's been going on 52 years now, Mom. And I've missed two or three Sundays, and I knew nothing about the church. They've never, never had to send a visitation committee to check on me because I had my feeling sticked it out about four feet and somebody offended me. I've had some preachers. We had some, we had some strong preaching last night and no doubt yesterday and Sunday. I've had some real men of God. They preached me out in the woods. They preached me down to the altar, but they had never been one preached me out. Never have been one. Solomon said, open rebuke is better than secret love. And some real men of God had to hurt me to help me. That's right, friend. Two or three Sundays. One of them Sundays was 1993. I don't know where you knew it or not. We had a blizzard right here in northwest Georgia. Snow drifted behind the dining hall out here between eight and ten feet deep. We couldn't even get out of the yard. had no power. But God had worked all that out. I don't have time to tell you. We had service. But Jimbo Seaton was dating Miss Amanda Wheeler. We call her our adopted daughter. She lived with us for years. He couldn't get back to Knoxville. So he preached Sunday morning to our church. And Brother Mike Prabat preached Sunday evening. Service right off. When she gets so bad here in northwest Georgia, snow and ice, that churches... Is calling off for services. We always try to call in and tell them, come on out to Concord. Amen. You say, I'm afraid grandmother's going to get her hip broke. Well, you weren't afraid for her to get it broke on Monday, y'all headed out. Yeah. Too bad to go to church on Sunday, but well enough to go to work on Monday. Amen. One Sunday, Brother Brown, I had about 13, about 14 that vehicle. The snow, the road was Iced over snow. When we started down that hill, Brother Steve at the church, I lost her, buddy. I had no control. She's heading right into a Lincoln. Right in, friend. When I got down to the bottom of the hill, them garden angels turned her. You better believe it. Maybe. Hallelujah. Children. Them angels turned the vehicle. We're heading right in. No way to miss. 
got right down at the bottom of the hill and whoom, over to the right. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, friend. I wouldn't stay at home. And I prayed for him this morning. George, President George W. Bush. You better believe I prayed for all them, a lot of them others that are still living. I even prayed for President Bill Clinton, his wife Hildry, their daughter Kelsey. Prayed for him this morning. God turned me. And a bunch of others. Is everybody listening? Yes. President George W. Bush, hallelujah. Nay, man. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And I'd say that if he was a Democrat or independent. So you ain't got no right to get upset at me and <clears throat> pooch my mouth. And I tell you, the fifth way you can tell whether or not you're saved, children, you better nail her down. First Peter 2 2. Didn't nobody have to tell me when I got saved, I'd start reading my Bible. I just, mother thought I was going to run my eyes, going to sleep with a light in my eyes. I'd sit up to 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning reading my Bible. And I slept with my Bible 20 years. And that didn't help me a bit, sleeping with my Bible. But it didn't hurt me, Brother Hedrick. I slept with my Bible 20 years. I slept with it. They said, oh, Sammy Allen, first five years I was saved. They didn't say I was psycho or mentally disturbed. More country people didn't know them words. They said, Sammy Allen's going crazy. said, he's losing his mind. He's reading that Bible so much. They said, he is going crazy. That's right. Nabai. Saved. Hallelujah. I've got eternal life. I've got everlasting life. Amen. I'm going to live as long as God lives. I'm going to have a glorified body. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something else, preachers. You preachers, stand up. I'm gonna, all you got called preachers, stand up. And I want you to look at me. Now, John 3.30, where John the Baptist said, I must decrease, but he must increase. Now, go ahead and preach that, and it's good preaching. The more you decrease, the more he can increase. Go ahead and preach that, but that's nothing what John's talking about. You say, what is he talking about? Well, John said, I've finished her up. I've finished my work. See, his disciples have been over there listening to Jesus. Now he's performing them miracles. Now we've got these young preachers, Brother Brown. I'm nearly myself now. Just was, I'm almost top of the mountain. And God's got these young preachers coming along. There's Brother Randy Southern. He's already got part of my mantle. That's right. And there's these young preachers coming along. I'm nearly to the top of the mountain, buddy. Amen. And John Baptist said, I must decrease. Jesus told there. They come over and said, John, Jesus told there doing all of that. Well, he said, I must decrease. I've finished mine up, but he must increase. You as well say, man, that's what's on that. That's right in the Bible. Amen, friend. John said, I finished her up, buddy. That's it. He said, I'm decreasing, but he's increasing. How you like that? I like it, friend. I like it. There ain't no kind of food I like as good as this. You love the Bible? And I've seen people stand on their Bible. You can stand on it, but I know nothing about it. If I'd have studied it the last 26 years and read it like I should, I read a little bit. If I'd studied, studied like I should, I could have preached more of it. Amen. Amen. Let's see it. Are you saved? Amen. The sixth way you can tell whether or not you're saved is probably six, eight, four ways. But if you'd be without chastisement, what of all the partakers? All the partakers, then your bastard's not sons. If you can get out and live like the world and dress like the world, talk like the world, 
go to the same place to take go to. And God never chastises you. God never chastens you. I'm going to tell you the reason why. Hey, you don't belong to it. Amen. And you can, if you've been trained in a by good godly daddy and a mama, is everybody listening? You can do wrong if you're not saved and feel bad. Because you feel bad, that don't mean you're saved. Amen. You could feel bad and not be saved. You better get this thing nailed down. Amen. You better not be like that baseball game. In the 20s, the Washington Senators was played. I can't remember. I, I don't remember the other team that I read about. They're playing for the championship. That batter for Washington hit that ball, friend, over the outfielder's head. That runner round first, second, third home. Wasn't even close, Randy. The Washington Senators fans went hysterical, screaming and hollering. We're the champions. And in all that excitement, what do you think happened? The runner, one of the, the umpires saw it, and the first baseman saw it. The runner missed first base. They got the ball back over there, and when they got the crowd quieting down, that umpire said, You are out! And Brother Brown, I'm such a slow learner. Took me over 40 years. Took me 40 years to learn this. All these people in Matthew 7, 21, 22, 23, every one of them is religious. Took me over 40 years. There ain't no outlaws here. All of them are religious and all of them are lost. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, and why call you me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. God's got a plan right here in this King James Bible. You either come God's way or you'll die and go to hell. Sure as you're sitting here or standing here. Many will say to me in that day, what day? John 5, 22, the father judgeth no man, but have committed all judgment unto the son. Where will it be? Right throne judgment. Lord, Lord, if we not prophesied in thy name, did we preach, Lord? In thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. That will be the saddest words that will ever fall on natural minded ears, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, when I got up here, I didn't get up here to take all this time. I seldom ever preach at Faith Baptist Camp. And sometimes I'll be in the secret place praying, Brother Harden, and the Holy Spirit will impress me. I want you to preach over there this morning. I'll come over here and try to get out of it. I'd rather hear these other men of God. And I'm serious, friend. You better listen at me. God help us. I didn't mean to say everything I've said, but you can write her down in boxcar letters. I've said what the Holy Ghost wanted me to say. Amen. Where will you be? A million years from today, I tell you where you'll be. You'll either be in the New Jerusalem or you'll be in the lack of fire and brimstone. That's where you'll be. That's just exactly where you'll be. Preaching without unction, preaching without anointing, preaching without a message, we filled our churches with goats and trying to train them to act like sheep. In most all of our Baptist churches, the Holy Spirit's been quenched. There's much jealousy among us. And he's been grieved because, well, a lot of church members are living. That's what grieves him, Brother Harden, if you'll read the verses before and after Ephesians 4.30. It's when a saved person gets cold and indifferent. What happens? You get careless. Then you get critical. You start finding fault with others, trying to justify yourself. And then if you don't get some help there, you'll become calloused. Second Corinthians chapter 1, that's what will happen. And see it, friend, God help us. Serious time. Where will you be? Where will you be? 
Will the circle be unbroken? You knew both of them, Brother Marin. M.L. Mayo, Chief Ahafka. They was at our house one Monday morning. Jimmy had fixed breakfast for him. Brother M.L. Mayo, large family. He's telling about his mother's home going. And Brother Stevie was right there over, and she was trying to tell him something. He couldn't make it out. He just couldn't make out the words. But a year later, a little over a year, he was back at the old home place. And the Holy Ghost said, Emil, would you like to know what your mama, and I didn't say mother too. I'm an old pie. I'm old pie. It's mama and daddy for him. It's not mother and father here. It's breakfast, dinner, and supper here. It's, if you indict me for dinner, look for me at 11.30. About 11.30, I'll be over at your house. Hey, man, said, would you like to know what your mama was trying to tell you? said, I sure would. said, Neil, over there where your mother used to kneel and pray. I'm going to let you know. You know what his mom was trying to tell him? Son, get all the children in and bring them with you. And Neil Mayo, Mayo, Mayo said, I never rested content until everyone I'm going to say. Never danced on a dance floor, friend. But that for about three months here a while back in Nascada, I was tempted strong to have him to pull off on the side of the road and make dance on the side of the road, friend. Amen. Amen. You can ride her down. I've got her on, I've got I got the same thing in me that David had. I've got it in me, friend. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, friend. When, when we get to the marriage and they start saying, Hallelujah! I don't want it to make me nervous. I don't want to jump. Amen. I want to be used to her here, friend. Amen. Pickens County Camp Meeting. I believe Brother Milford Biddle preached the first week, and I preached the second. Them pretty white shavings in that arbor, Brother Mary. There's rejoicing. Because their names were written in heaven. Either I preach both weeks. Stay right there pretty close, Donna. Either I preach both weeks. Or Brother Milford Bill. The meeting broke out and run the third week. And Brother Albert. The third week. Some of them got the king hippies. Amen. They got the king hippies. And when my little mother-in-law would get in the glory, she might shout 25 minutes. The girls would have to get around her. You didn't stop her. You didn't stop the singing. You didn't stop everything. You didn't stop her. Amen. Amen. Dr. Bob Jones Sr. said, Ever save person. Ever save person. At the least once. You ought to get the glory. Get the cane of hippies, friend. Amen. Me and Marvin and Carr come in. We got in on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning. Marvin's over in the guest bedroom. I'm over in mine and Jimmy's bedroom in the bed. I said, hey, Marvin. Hey, Marvin. Come over here. Help me. Get out of the bed. I got in the glory, friend. Amen. Amen. Guilty. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. But she was a dirt road, brother. Mary, that was a dirt road. We'd been over to Maple Grove. Mr. Red Davis was with us. And he's down in his back. Now look at me. We stopped right out here at Polecat Creek. I'll carry you out there if you want to go. And we had an old-fashioned prayer meeting, and God healed Brother Red Davis right there at Polecat Creek. Amen. Amen. Amen, son. Amen. <laughs> when he got home, he wanted to wake Mrs. Davis and the girls up. 
God healed him at Polecat Creek. We stopped at Resaca, had a prayer meeting over there one time in Resaca. They thought it was a bunch of drunks, and they called the law. We was already gone. We didn't know they'd call the law. And when the law got there, they got a search and round, and they found the fellow drunk out there behind the service station. And God healed. When Tabernacle Baptist Church over 50 years ago was being born, Dr. Harold B. Sotler, Evangelist Mays Jackson, others would be up there in the cow pasture praying. They'd get in the glory and they'd call the law. Lord, come up there. Dr. Sotler, Evangelist Mays Jackson, and others, they'd be swinging out of pine saplings. Lights had hit him. Hit it back, buddy. Tabernacle Baptist Church was being born. Hallelujah. Nabe, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, because the spirits, if I'd have been one of the 70, I'd have been rejoicing too. The, the devils had been under subjection unto them. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not because the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names Amen. are written in heaven. Amen. And 27 times in First John, 27 times you have that word no. And if you know your name's written in heaven, you ought to stand up right now and have a spell. Amen. Come on now. Everybody ought to stand. You ought to stand right now if you know your name's written in heaven. Amen. And you ought to rejoice because your name. You ought to have a spell. Amen. Go ahead. You're, you, you're not doing good. You ought to, do you know your name's written in heaven? Do you know your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? You've got a King James Bible right to rejoice. 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 What do you feel like it or don't feel like it? You ought to rejoice because your name is written in the heaven, friend. Have a spell. Let's see what remains then. Let's see what Jesus said. Matthew 5 11. Blessed are ye when they shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely. You got to be sure what's being told on you. There's no truth in it. You got to check your motive and be sure that what you're doing is for His name's sake. And then, if that's true, you ought to have a spell. Jesus said, Rejoice. Don't go around with your head down to the ground. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Overwhelming. Extraordinary. Have a spell. Glory to God. Lord, maybe I'm doing maybe a little bit better than I thought I was doing. Have a spell, friend. I mean, have a spell. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. I wonder, Dr. Brown, I wonder where Brother Joe Parson got that at. What I'm fixing to say. He'd say, Israel saw God's acts. But Moses... Knew his ways. You got to spend a lot of time with somebody to know their ways. You know where that's at, sir? Hundred and third son. Israel saw God's acts, but Moses knew his ways. No wonder when he came down off the mountain that he had this kind of glory of God. You couldn't spend 40 days with God, not have the glory on you. So walking across them grounds, He's about Brother Marin's height and about your size. I'm a babe, Brother Brown. I'm a babe in Christ. We're walking across the grounds, Rock Acres Bible Camp, 48 or 9 years ago. I said, Brother Joe, where is the secret at in the Christian life? Here's what he said. Sam, he could say that. Sam, he said, the secret is... That you spend more time with him than you do anybody else. That's the truth. That's what he told me, friend. 
Now, I want you to raise your hand, 138 Psalm, verse 7. The psalmist said, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thy wilt revive me. In Psalm 85, verse 6, the psalmist said, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? And I want to see each hand. Brother Blue, does anybody here have a camera? If you have a camera, if somebody has a camera, I won't take your picture. Are there anybody in this tabernacle today, you feel like you're as revived as a saved person could be? That you don't need to be revived. That you're as revived as a saved person could be. Raise your hand and hold it high, please. No hands raised. Not a one. Are you saved? How would you like to get revived today? All you'd have to do is Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Wherefore sin, we also were compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Every once in a while I do what I do, I wave at them. I call them cheerleaders. That's some heroes of faith in chapter 11. We're compassed about with them. I wave at them. And listen at this too. Under the angel of the church at Ephesus. Write these things. Say, he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Help me now here, Brother Carpenter. What's the candlesticks? That's some churches, isn't it? Well, now, if he is walking in the midst of them churches, what would make you think every once in a while he don't come down and walk in the midst of ours? Yeah. Hello, Jesus. Sure good to have you this afternoon. Amen. It's a real blessing, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, it's a real blessing to have you here walking in our midst. Glory to God. Hallelujah, friend. I wave at them, son. They're cheerleaders. You say, what do you think they're saying? I believe they're saying Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season. We shall reap if we faint not. Amen. And I can tell you how to keep them fainting. Luke 18, 1. He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen. If you don't want to faint, you better pray, friend. Amen. You better pray. Amen. What about that great church at Ephesus? He said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou fallen, repent, do thy first works. Oh, brother, Mary, huh? I've been saved going on 52 years. You mean I need to go back and start doing what I was doing when I first got saved? When I had such a hunger and thirst for the Word of God? When I got saved, friend, we lived over here in Fife Bend. I thought everybody in that bend ought to be saved, Amen. and I went after That's right. Largest crowd I ever cared to church in a car was 51 Chevrolet. How many? 13. How'd you get them all in there? Raise the trunk. Put quilts in the trunk. Amen. Some wrote in the trunk, friend. I thought everybody in that band ought to be saved. I got saved in 55, Brother Steve. Me and my dad used to drink together, Brother Steve, like your dad. Gamble together like y'all. Thought them Went to them cockfights together. I got saved in 55, and I was right over here at Mount Zion that Friday night when Dad got saved. 57. I remember it. Hey, sir, are you looking at me? I remember it just like it was yesterday. I'm glad it was 57. Amen. Brother Randy, I want to thank God it's 57. Dad came to that altar Friday morning. I don't know how we got Dad in that morning service. Them men of God prayed for him. Dad didn't get saved. But if it had been 97, he'd have never got out of that church while I'm making a profession. They'd have got a decision out of my daddy. But when that invitation was given Friday evening, there came Dad in overhauls and white shirt, a blue shirt. Dad got in, Brother Steve. Never did drink any more. Liquor. 
Never didn't drink any more vodka. Never didn't drink any more beer. Never didn't drink any more homebrew. Never cussed the mules another time. Cursed the mules. Never did gamble anymore. And for 17 years, Dad never wobbled on the axle. And I wish we could get to this place, all of us, if you're saved. 1958, Brother Larry. There's only two. Second week in August. Protracted meeting. Morning service, evening service. They still two in their family. My brother-in-law and my baby sister. Well, I'm the baby. And I had some neighbors. And I was a burdened friend. Brother Albert, I don't think I enjoyed a service. Thursday night, my brother-in-law made a profession. My sister was there Friday night. She said, I won't be back Saturday night. Too many hypocrites, and I don't have anything to wear. But if she, if Jesus, and he may be, if he was sitting right down there, I'd make, I knew she'd be there Saturday night. I knew it. And she was there too, friend. We're going to go out there sometime, Brother Steve, and you're going to get a key. Mountain Zion Baptist Church, three pews over here, facing this way. That's where them elderly ladies sit. Well, them long dresses on. Loose and flowing. I wonder some of you, you better thank God that material's made out of what it is. I mean, sold to what it is. Because you have to walk like this. That word modest means, that means long, low, and uh, force, forcing. What? Give me that word. Flowing. Long and flowing. Amen. Three pews over here, Brother Steve. That's where them men, elderly men, sit. Amen, corner. These pews right here started back there. About that second pew, there's my baby sister. She is right there. I'd been carrying Joe Henderson, Jackie Henderson Church. Both of them had made professions. The mother had got right with God. And I believe she got right with Albert. She taught Sunday school till she died. R.C. Henderson sitting right there about where you at, Brother Brown. He sat next to Mr. Clay Sisson. And when they started to give the invitation, he said, Clay, let's get out of here. His legs wouldn't carry. He fell down between the pew. I'm down, come down here and praying with him. I didn't know that he'd hear me out there on that hill the night praying, been getting up out of bed and coming out there and listening to me. They said, oh, Sammy Allen's going to have TB. They didn't say tuberculosis. Out in winter and summer, out there in the fields, praying every night. He's preparing me then for what I've been doing for 40-something years now. And Sunday afternoons, when I could have been out there playing ball, Playing sports, get in from church, eat fast, get my Bible and some books, go down to bend or up on the mountain, spend all afternoon along with the Lord. It's dangerous for a pastor to say at the closed service, does anybody else have a word? I had a volcano down on the inside. And if my baby sister was living, she was under such conviction, you couldn't. Convince her, friend. I didn't go nowhere near her. She said, if Bug, that she called me Bug, said, if you hadn't come to me, I wouldn't went to the hall. I didn't go nowhere near her. I'm down here playing with Mr. Clay Sis. I mean, Mr. Clay Sis was sitting next to her. Mr. R.C. Henderson. And my sister was getting saved. And that night, Linda, when I got home, went back down in that new ground, walking up and down them cotton rows. The last one had just got in. Amen. My baby sister, that meant the circle will never be unbroken. And I'd help pray her in. I helped pray Uncle Robert Rankin Timms fought in World War II. I was there when he got saved. I said, when Uncle Buddy got saved, he's in the battle of the bush. 
lost. God spared me. Me and my sister Johnny prayed. Brother Steve to was near to give out, but he wasn't going to settle for nothing but the real thing. Amen. But he got in. Amen. Been a lot of them pulled green, buddy. If you're not careful, you want to see your sister, children saved so bad, you'll pull them green, friend. Brother Larry, Brother Brown, I'd have never thought the devil had deceived my whole family. I remember when Samuel made his profession. Brother Ernie Dodd is preaching for us. On a Sunday night, Samuel came forward, and my wife dealt with him. I thought he got saved, Brother Steve, but he just got saved last October. He'd gone up to South Carolina to a football game. He was with one of his idols, Dale Wills. It was an All-American in two poles. And he woke up Saturday morning. My, he thought he was having a heart attack. He said, y'all going to, he thought it was that high blood pressure medicine. He said, y'all going to have to carry me to the emergency room. And he went in, he'd been praying, though, Lord, I want you to show me. I want you to show me right where I stand with you. He went in there to wash his head, and the Holy Ghost said, uh, you've been wanting to know where you stand? He said, you're lost. He fell down there, friend. Right in front of his idol. He called his mama, though. They stayed on the phone an hour and a half. He said, Mama, I'm not getting up from here. I know I'm saved. Oh, Samuel Burton. Amen. 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 What a difference, friend. Amen. Amen. And I thought David got saved when Brother Robert Taylor, that great preacher, was preaching. My wife dealt with him. But Brother Larry, you was probably there when they had the Sword of the Lord Conference at Bob Jones University. That tent that they used, it's been about 18, 19 years ago, was a tent God had blessed us with that the young people used. Lamar and David had gone up to pick up the tent. Coming back, David had been praying, Lord, if I'm not saved, when I get under conviction, make it rough on me. David loves them super highways. Lamar likes to go through the country. When he got down to the Gainesville exit, Lamar exited off, went through Gainesville. Place there where Bill Ellis is from. Dawsonville. Tate. Jasper. David stayed on that super highway, buddy. I don't know where he was on 85 or 285 or 75. He got her sister's conviction. He thought he was having a heart attack. He pulled into a gas service station. And he realized he's lost. And he got saved. 1130, Saturday night, he called her home. Daddy, I just got saved. I didn't, like a lot of parents, oh, David, 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 you didn't get saved. You got saved when Brother Robert Taylor was here. You just got cold and indifferent. I wouldn't say that if I was a parent for this Tabernacle full of hundred dollar bills. No, I said, Come on over, Dave. You and Gwen, we're having a big celebration tonight. Amen. And David and Jimmy and Gwen fixed the meal. We rejoiced to way up in the morning, sitting on the horse. Come over here, Donna. Get ready. Sit down on that piano. How many years has it been, Donna? Four years. Was it a Friday night? Tuesday night. We had about 40 saved that night. Then we're a little over here. Donna was so afraid. She was raised by a godly man by the stenic blue. And his wife, Mrs. Edna Blue. Donna sitting on that piano there. She was afraid she was going to fall off of it. And she got off of it and got born again. Never. Well, if Hannah, it's this week, Brother Phil. It's this week, Brother Steve. It's, it's been five years. If Hannah Lucinda Adam had got killed, there ain't nobody in this country convinced me that she wasn't in heaven. She never gave me and Mama a bit of trouble. I was up here close to the gorge. 
preaching a tent meeting. I was making a turnaround. I got in Wednesday night. Lights are still on at Dallas, coming home from prayer meeting. Hannah said, Mama, I want to be saved. Jimmy said, Hannah, why do you want to be saved? She said, I don't want to die and go to hell. said, what do you know about hell? said, I know I don't want to go there. When they got home, Jimmy thought Hannah would go on to bed. She didn't. She didn't go to bed. When I got home about 15 to 1, 1 o'clock, lights was on at the Allens. Me and Jimmy prayed for Hannah, and I thought Hannah got saved, friend. But five years ago now, this coming Sunday, right after the Thanksgiving meeting, Hannah said, Daddy, can I sleep in the bed with you? I mean, sleep in the room with you and Mama? I said, why, yes. She is under conviction. She is in the bathroom vomiting. She's about 14, maybe nearly 15. She's 19 now. She'd have been 15 probably, or 14. Everybody look at me. Monday morning, I was going to Mississippi. Jimmy and them was going to wash sheets, towels, bath clouds. Hannah went on to Candleland Christian School. She called. I went and picked her up sick again. In the bathroom, Monday evening sick, vomiting again. Tuesday evening, sick again. Jimmy said, Hannah, I got saved by myself. Your daddy did too. So it's left up to you. Hannah started calling on God, boy. You talk about getting saved, old Hannah got in. And though she was real religious, it completely transformed her life. Brother Brown, I didn't say one thing to Hannah and the twins Saturday night. When I got home, I said, Jimmy, where's Hannah? You know where this at? They do it for every camp meeting. It's over here in this tabernacle, praying over every pew in this tabernacle. Amen. Every one of them, every one of these pews has been prayed over. Amen. Hannah and done it in June after the she got saved right after Thanksgiving or maybe the Jewish meeting. Jimmy said, we've got to hurry up now. We have service every Saturday night at the church. We've got to hurry up now. Got to get over the tabernacle. They pray over all these pews. But what if Hannah got killed this week, five years ago? She'd have been in hell, friend. She'd have been in hell as sure as you're standing here or sitting here. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Everybody's being seated. The pen is just playing. And nobody's looking around. On this Tuesday afternoon, that's right, just come on to the altar. If you need to come, you just come right up. You don't have to wait for me to give no invitation. That's right, ma'am. You come right on. I wonder how many is here. Be easy now. I'm almost afraid to have you to raise your hand. Brother Allen, I've got the Holy Ghost living in me. I was made a new creature. I love the brethren, love the church, love the Word of God. When I do wrong, he chastises me. I know my name's written in the heaven. If you're not careful, don't stay right here, children. You'll raise your hand because the person next to you does. That's what you'll do, son. How many of you can honestly, truthfully, in the light of Proverbs 15, 3, vows of the Lord in every place, the holy and the evil and the good. How many of you can raise your hand? Don't you raise that hand, girl. Boy, because the person next to you does. I know my name's written in the heaven, Brother Allen. I'm not guessing, hoping, or thinking. Okay, you can let them know. I wonder how many is here today said, Brother Allen, I'm going to be honest today. I'm going to be truthful. I'm going to be honest, Brother Allen. I don't know if you're them saved. And I want the Christians to pray for me. Would you raise your hand and hold it high? Yes. Yes, you couldn't convince me, friend, that there's not some people in here lost. Anybody else? Pray for me, Brother Allen. I don't know if sure I'm saved. Yes, I see that hand there. I definitely thought I seen a hand. Now, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you that raised your hand said, Brother Allen, I know I'm saved. 
How many of you can raise your hand and say, Brother Allen, God hadn't dealt with me about a thing today. As far as I know, there's no weights, no unconfessed sins. The line's clear. I can get a prayer through right now. Would you raise your hand? You be honest now. You can let them down. I'm sure there's close to a hundred hands that wouldn't raise. You that didn't raise your hand, why don't you just get up right now? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. That's right, young lady. That's right, young lady. Come on, teenagers, boys and girls. If we say that we've not sinned, we make him a liar and his word's not in us. But if we confess our sins, why don't you get up right there now? Come on down here to this altar. Lay aside every way. Confess every unconfessed sin. Fully submit your life to the Lord. I wonder why the heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If we're having the benediction right now, dismissing, how many of you could leave this tabernacle with a clear conscience? Brother Allen, I've done everything the Holy Spirit's impressed me to do. I've not quenched it. I've done everything. I can walk out of this tabernacle with a clear conscience. Would you raise your hand? I've done everything, Brother Allen, that the Holy Spirit's impressed me to do. Okay, you can let them die. Now, there's 75 hands that wasn't raised. Are you going to quench the Holy Spirit? Are you going to smother him? That's right, sir. Young people, look at the man's coming down the aisle. You'll want to follow him. Get up and come on. That's right, young lady. Get up, young lady. Teenagers, get up. Don't let pride, prestige, popularity, your position, nothing, nobody's standing you up. First Thessalonians 5, 19, quench not the spirit. That word quench means smut. Be the last time I'll ask this question. Young lady, come on. That's right. Young lady right there, if you'll get up right there and come on, there'd probably be 30 or 40 following you. You start to get up, young lady. Ask them to let you out. Just ask them to let you out of there. That's right. Just come right up. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Dad, don't do it. Mom, don't do it. Young people, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Make one other proposition. Listen closed. If you want to be what God wants you to be more than anything, and if you want to be everything God wants you to be more than anything, and today you're ready to lay aside every weight, confess every unconfessed sin, I want you to get up right now and come to this altar. That's right. Thank God for all these that are coming. wants me to be more than anything and I want to be everything he wants me to be more than anything this afternoon I'm willing to lay aside every weight confess every unconfessed sin fully submit my life to him get up and come on that's right just keep on coming don't be afraid I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But without me, you can do nothing. Thank God for all these that are down here thought. That's right, young lady, just come right on. We've got plenty of time.